Hi, and welcome to the debate about being British with Peter Whittle, author of Being British, What's Wrong With It, and Matthew Collins, author of Hate, My Life in the British Far Right. We'll start with you, Peter. Does Britishness exist? I think Britishness definitely exists. It exists in just the same way as Frenchness does or Americanness does. Uh, I think the fact that we keep asking this question at the moment, or we feel we have to keep asking it, is because Britishness has had a, an absolute onslaught uh, on it over the past 40 years or so. And Matt? Yeah, I agree. Britishness does exist, obviously. It's what it, it's what it says on my passport. But I think it's a fairly fluid thing. And I think it's, a, it's very, very different. For, Britishness is very different uh, for different people. So yes, it does exist, but it is, it's fluid. I don't think it is something we can put, just put our hand on and touch it in the way some people want to. OK. What's the difference, Matt, we'll start with you, between patriotism and nationalism? Ah, patriotism and nationalism. Um, patriotism can be quite a healthy thing. It's, uh, it's a respect and it's a love and it's understanding of one's country, an understanding of one's country. And nationalism, I tend to see, as, as I see it, obviously, uh, in the work that I do, nationalism tends to be something which can have quite unhealthy connotations, I think. Peter? Yes, I think uh, I would agree with Matt on that. I think that patriotism uh, doesn't have to be exclusive by any means. That's the crucial thing. But the general connotation of nationalism is that it's sort of exclusive and therefore it's sort of aggressive too. It tends to be more bellicose, um, whereas patriotism can actually be really quite a gentle thing. What responsibility does the education system have towards instilling a sense of British identity from an early age? That question is to Peter. I think that the education system uh, is crucial uh, when it comes to identity. And I can uh, only illustrate this best by looking at the negative way in which it's been used over the past 40 years or so. Uh, the state education system really has become about social engineering and so therefore our, our national story has not been taught and when you look at any survey you will find that particularly young people know very little about very important parts of our history. Matt. Our national story is changing. Britishness is fluid, it's changing, it, it, like I said earlier you can't put a finger on it. I think we have uh, national, I forget what it's called now, identity classes for young children so they understand but it's not so much about learning about Britishness in school, because we, it's about actually, in this global world, it's about sharing common values, I think, with, with, with people. So it's not so much about learning about Britishness and, and flag waving and things like that, but it's what are our common values. We, you know, we live in a multicultural, multiracial society. So it's, I think the education is more about learning about the tolerance and the understanding, which of course are you know, the British ideals that we share with everybody else. Should Scotland remain part of the Union, and what mm. argument would you offer them, depending on your choice, Matt? Should Scotland remain part of the Union? Um, that is a question for the Scottish people. Uh, I'm not Scottish. I mean, I, you know, one of the things that Peter and I was talking about beforehand is, uh, you know, I feel that I'm English. I feel that my thing is uh, about making English more, English being English more healthy, more understandable, less racist, less nationalist. So it is a question for the Scottish people to decide and, and, and they will decide. Peter? I think Scotland should remain a part of the United Kingdom simply because uh, you know if you talk about the world becoming more global then what is the point in countries breaking off into ever smaller sort of balkanized units and the fact is is that when we were the as the UK we have achieved an enormous amount and Scotland particularly uh, disproportionately uh, has contributed to that. Um, Interestingly, though, to go back to our original question about nationalism, it's funny how the left in this country have always thought Scottish nationalism was just fine. You know, somehow that was a progressive sort of nationalism. Uh, I don't agree uh, at all with that. English nationalism was somehow also seen as being a, a dirty thing. And I think that that really shows really how those two things have been seen in our country. But I think Scotland definitely should remain within the UK. Matt, do you have anything to say to that? Um, my Englishness is about not hating anyone. My Englishness is about not hating other countries, about not hating other people. The English don't have a colour. We just have a country and everyone's welcome. Sure. We share common values and that's it. Okay. Final question. Very quick one. Mm. 
Is there one single thing that you think unites all British people? And if so, what is it? And that goes to Peter. Uh, it's very difficult to see what unites uh, uh, British people. If you talk just generally about values like tolerance and things like that, I can't think of a country in the world that wouldn't lay claim to those things. So you can't therefore say that is specifically British. I would say that what unites them when you look at polls, uh, which I've done a lot of lately for my book, uh, is a great pride in British history, actually. It's very easy to say, oh, Joe, don't worry about history, you know, uh, you know just look at what other people uh, have in the world uh, and all the rest of it and try to link to them. The fact is, you know, if you don't know your past history, you actually don't know how to face the future. And that, that is a huge source of pride for ordinary people in Britain, according to all the polls, is our history. And, in fact, the things that symbolise our history. Matt, any one thing? And what about the Olympics and the Royal events that we've had recently? Don't talk to me about the Royal event. Let's talk, let's talk about the, the history of this country. The history of this country, for some people around the world, could be quite bloody, could be quite horrible. That flag could be called a butcher's apron. One of the things, that sort of looking to that past, which is why you know, I'm sort of working on that, on that English identity thing, is that we're part of a country that has a tremendous future. Let's work on that future and sort of leave certain aspects of the past behind because it's about the future, it's not about the past. Peter, did you want to say something very quickly? Uh, I think, uh, you know, the, the, the fact is uh, here we are, you know, it's coming up to the Diamond Jubilee, whatever Matt thinks, the fact of the matter is people don't have to celebrate if they don't want to. Millions of people are celebrating. It obviously means something to them, and that might be indefinable. It doesn't make them racist, it doesn't make them nationalist, nothing like that. But they want to celebrate a landmark in their country's history. Peter Whittle, Matthew Collins, thanks for joining us.